sad that the leader of the opposition, having just lost a vote of non-confidence in the government yesterday, is putting forward the exact same motion today. I think it shows his desperation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, in fact, the motion specifically demonstrates that the that this government, this NDP Liberal government, has doubled housing costs. I think the question is why are the Conservatives so desperate for an election right now? Because they want to make sure they get out before Canadians understand that they have a hidden agenda. The Liberal minority is set for another confidence vote test on Tuesday, just days after surviving yesterday's Conservative motion of non-confidence. It's a high-stakes start to a marathon fall sitting of Parliament. And here to help us understand the politicking at play is our friend Bench. With me this evening, former BC Premier Christy Clark. She's now a senior advisor with Bennett Jones. Former Alberta MLA and Cabinet Minister Gary Marr is here. He's the president and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. And CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair rounds us out. Hi, everybody. Very nice to see you tonight. Christy, I'll start with you because everyone had kind of over the past few weeks on this panel arrived at the conclusion there wouldn't be, you know, any kind of early election because the political incentive for a number of parties, namely the NDP and the Liberals, didn't seem to be there. Do you think the dynamics this week with the bloc issuing such a specific ultimatum might change that calculation? No, I don't. I think that the NDP and the Liberals are going to remain just as interested in holding on to, you know, keeping the government together. And I mean, but remember, though, I, I, I watched your the interview with Mark Holland, and I have to say he is an amazing, amazing defenseman. I mean, he's like the Morgan Riley of politics in that interview. I mean, you're like the Connor Connor McDavid, didn't get the cup, but still fantastic fasci, I'm going to say. The, <laughs> that was an incredible, but I mean, what he said, though, was absolutely true, which is the opposition say that they want an election for Canadians, but they want an election so that they can optimize the timing for them to become government. This is not about Canadians. This is about what the Conservatives feel fits their agenda. That's what's happening in the House of Commons today. And I do think that at a moment when the government does seem to have some game going on with some of the programs that they're talking about and really getting them rolled out and implemented, I mean, they haven't been perfect from any by, by any stretch of the imagination from my perspective, but... I do think that the autism strategy, some of the other strategies that they're talking about are important. And I think we should see if we can get some of the way there on some of those programs, because that would actually be what's good for Canadians. I, I think at the same time, uh, Gary, it's probably fair to say that if the opposition is self-interested in an election, I think there's a part of the liberals in the government that's self-interested in remaining in government versus heading to an election, too. Well, you've heard me say many times in politics, there's no interest more sincere than self-interest. And I think that, you know, I watched uh, the interview that you had with Holland as well, and maybe that leads us to perhaps a later discussion about the tenor of uh, behavior in the House. I mean, uh, Minister Holland was extremely defensive, trying to overtalk uh, your questions, which I think were good questions. Uh, this The same dynamic is happening in the House right now. Uh, the fact is, is the government's had a very difficult few weeks. Uh, the departure of uh, Minister Rodriguez, five chiefs of staff who have left in key portfolios in the last few weeks. Uh, you've had... Um, you know, people leaving the uh, Privy Council office, Seamus O'Regan uh, stepping back from his cabinet responsibilities, uh, Jeremy Broadhurst, the national campaign uh, coordinator, uh, stepping down from his role. Um, and the interesting dynamic to me is that, you know, the, you know, the, the, the NDP uh, and Mr. Singh tore up uh, the confidence and supply agreement saying that they were appalled by the Liberals. Well, now they're actually voting with the Liberals because they're appalled at the hypothetical things that they say that the Conservative Party is going to do, uh, none of which has been revealed yet because it is the role of opposition to oppose. It is not the role of opposition to say, here's what we would do different. It is That's during an election, of course. Uh, but at the present time, it is to oppose and to point out all of the things that you know, the Liberal government has, uh, um, you know, made a point of trying to move forward on and perhaps even failed on, uh, that is the role of the opposition. And, and uh, uh, so I, I think that expecting Pierre Polyev to come up with good ideas now, A, it's not his role, and B, it's not his political interest to do so either because if he comes up with a good idea uh, as perhaps 
Mr. Singh has learned, um, you know, the, the Liberal Party will just take it and run it and take credit for it themselves. So I would expect that in the fullness of time, Mr. Polyev will uh, develop his policy for all Canadians to see. But right now, it's, it's hypothetical. It's coming, but the time is not now. Let's split the difference, Tom. And, and um, uh, Gary mentioned Mr. Singh, and I wanted to get your take on since the bloc issued its ultimatum. Ultimately, if you believe, let's say the, the government doesn't acquiesce on the two demands, they actually seem pretty hesitant on old age security, which is one of the two. Um, do you think the NDP ultimately will save save the bacon, so to speak, for, for the government if the bloc does decide to try and push forward with the motion of non-confidence? I'm less and less convinced. I, I know Trudeau a little bit for having been his opponent. You do get to know your opponent fairly well. And mm -hmm. he's headstrong and he's proud. And to have the Bloc Québécois out there essentially saying they're going to call the tune that he's going to dance to is something that he's going to react to. And he does have tools to fight that. One of the main tools is one that we saw Mr. Harper wield at one point, which was pro prorogation, which is essentially suspending parliament, letting existing legislation that's on it's on the table disappear, giving yourselves, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 days. How long is a liberal leadership campaign before you come back? There, There is, <laughs> frankly, since Toronto, sorry, since he, he went to New York, since the Colbert uh, show, more and more voices that I talk to, people who are well-informed, sense that Trudeau is preparing his departure and they're more convinced than ever that he's doing just that. I, I think they're putting up a good fight. I disagree that Holland did that well. Um, I think mm. that when Mark Holland looks at a camera and says that we're on a track to meet our obligations under the Paris Accord to reduce greenhouse gases, that is simply demonstrably not true. Whether it was Julie Gelfand, the previous Environment and, and Sustainable Development Commissioner, or the current one, who, whose name is Jerry DeMarco, they, they've just proven that that's not true. And even to get to the 1% that they squeezed out at the end of the toothpaste tube, if you look at how they played with the numbers, it's not even there. And that's not even taking into account the wildfires and what that's contributed in terms of greenhouse gases, which is, by the way, something that you have to include when you file under the Paris Accord. So so that is just not true. So they're, they're trying their best to put some sort of good faith on, on their record. There are good things that they've done. That's obvious. But as you correctly said, Vashi, nine years later, Canadians are looking for change. And it's going to be a very tough row for them to hold. The change that the Liberals can bring to the table is a change of leadership, period. There's nothing else that they can do to change. 22% behind in the poll, that's not even going to start to change. Who are the people in the wings? Three or four of them. Melanie Jolie. François Philippe Champagne, of course, Christy Phillip, and Mark Holland. Of course, uh, we, we've had a chance to talk <laughs> about that, but I, I do think that that's their real option to try to hit refresh and, and to put uh, new ideas forward. Articulate new ideas is probably the best way to put it. I feel like everyone watching what's unfolding right now, and I'll give the last word to you, Christy, I've just got 30 seconds, is split on the question of exactly what Tom just laid out, whether the prime minister will stick around. The sense in Ottawa is that he will, but I take Tom's point that there is more conversation lately about the possibility that he won't. Do you have a gut feeling? Has your mind changed at all on that? My view is he is probably going to fight in the next election, whenever that is. I mean, there's two separate questions, though, Vashi, right? When is the election going to happen? Right. Is that, is that yeah. in May? Is somebody going to trigger it then? And is he going to fight in the election? My view is he is going to stick around until the election's done. And you know what? He has the confidence of his party in his caucus. So my I don't think he's going to go anywhere anytime soon. And that ultimately, when you're the prime minister or premier, that's your choice. Something tells me we'll be talking about it again in the coming weeks and months. I'll take a quick break. The front bench is sticking around.